Hi everyone, it's Kino here. Day one of the 30 day Ashtanga Yoga Challenge. And I hope that you are joining me every day the Ashtanga Yoga Method, which is the style of yoga that I've been practicing and teaching for more than 20 years. So welcome to the challenge. What do you have to do to join the challenge? Well, you gotta tune in to me right here for the next 30 days and then do the practice this incorporates the posture of the day taken from the Ashtanga Yoga Primary Series, which is the first out of six series in the Ashtanga Method, and then share your journey. That's all you have to do. If you're ready to join me for this Ashtanga Yoga Challenge, it's super simple. Every day, there's a posture of the day that's going to highlight kind of the emphasis that I want you to focus on. Some days will be tutorial-oriented, and some days will be practice-oriented. I'll always be guiding you through different options for what the is and what it's about. So if you want to join, then let's get started. The posture of the day today is the downward facing dog. So this is one of the most ubiquitous yoga poses in really like just of all time. You know, there's always a downward dog. And uh, if you love dogs, and I love dogs, hopefully you'll learn to love your downward dog too. At the same time, the downward facing dog can sometimes be a challenging posture because you might not know how to actually approach the posture to make it appropriate for your body. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then I'd like to kind of guide you through how you could potentially apply the technique of downward facing dog into your practice. If you don't have a good downward dog, we do so much downward dog in the Ashtanga method that it can just feel really, really challenging. Okay, so I'm gonna head on over to the yoga mat. And then the first thing that I want to draw your attention to in the downward facing dog is the position of the shoulders. I'm just gonna put my hair up real quick, make a quick little ponytail. And then I, wanna, I want you to take a look at the shoulder position. So I'm gonna get on my hands and knees and walk my hands a little forward. And then as I'm walking forward, I'm gonna roll the shoulders open into external rotation. The smiles of the elbows start to point outward, which is not what you want in downward dog. So you keep the shoulders rolling open while you draw the smiles of the elbows in line with the thumbs. Then to practice the shoulder position, engage the muscles of the rotator cuff and then drop your head down, forehead down. Then try to open your armpits a little bit towards the ground, but don't hyperextend. This position can be considered to be the half downward facing dog. And this is a good place to really practice your shoulder rotation. Let me show you what that looks like from the side. And this is different from another dog variation, which is the puppy pose. So let me show you half downward facing dog. In the half downward facing dog, you can start off in your hands position, curl the toes under, walk the hips a little bit back, and then trying to get that same feeling of moving back and up, but don't like I did. That's kind of not what we want in downward dogs. We need to keep not rounded and not extended just in a nice neutral position then do as i just instructed you for the shoulders get that external rotation in place and spit the smiles of the elbows in line with the thumbs that's going to help keep weight rooting down to the knuckle of your index finger and then exhale as you reach your forehead down towards the ground you can make some little adjustments like i was a little too narrow there and then you can keep a little weight in your toes and let the hips move back and up so if you're feeling really exhausted in the middle of your ashtanga practice half downward dog is always an acceptable version to come down into and this will help you get the hip flexion in the shoulder position really well established as i mentioned before you don't want to hyper extend your shoulders which looks like this moving more towards puppy pose so we want to keep ourselves in just a regular good old friend reliable downward facing dog now to come up into downward facing dog to add in the movement back and up so as you draw the navel in you can start off as though you're about to enter into your half downward dog stabilize the shoulders and then down really well is to let your pelvic floor really activate and draw in the hips back and up you're going to come off the balls of your feet and then you can walk the feet a little bit in so that they're comfortably rooting towards the ground when your feet are comfortably rooting towards the ground, you lift the kneecaps, open the shoulders, and distribute the weight equally between both feet and hands. Now, if your back is very rounded and you feel so much weight pushing into your hands, you could bend the knees and then send the chest down onto the thighs and send the hips back and up 
And then still, you would want to keep weight pushing down into the heels. In downward dog, you don't want to be up on the balls of your feet, but instead you really want to let weight be pushing down. If you need to bend the knees to keep the back more straight, you can do that. However, I really recommend that you lift the kneecaps and try to straighten your legs as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, the other position, if you have too much flexibility in your downward facing dog, then you hyperextend the downward dog, and this is not really advisable either. So you want to find that happy medium where you have just enough flexibility, just enough strength to support the posture. Okay, let's come on down, walk it in, and you can just shake that out for a moment. Now, downward facing dog is the foundational posture of the sun salutations. And the sun salutations are really the beginning of every Ashtanga yoga practice. So you're going to come to the front of your mat and let's go through at least one or two, maybe, maybe more than that, maybe a few sun salutations. I'm going to show a modified version of sun salutation A. In the first breath, you can raise your hands, keeping your hands in line with your shoulders. If your forward bend is a little tight, you can softly bend the knees as you fold forward and down. Then straighten the legs, inhale, look up, and then exhale, bend the knees, come back to plank, sink the knees down, and then exhale, chest goes onto the ground. For upward facing dog, if you're feeling any spinal compression, you can point your feet with a long breath in, this gives a spinal extension. And then we move back to the half downward dog, so walk your hands back, curl the toes under, and then exhale, find your half downward dog. We stay here for five breaths. One, draw the navel in, and so try to do that deep yogic breathing. Two, the navel is deeply in. Three, and the sitting bones are moving back and up. Four, we're almost there. Five, you're gonna look forward. Walk your hands a little in so you can come back into tabletop position. Lift your knees off the ground, and then just walk your feet forward between the hands and lift your chest forward. If you need to bend the knees a little, you can exhale, fold, and stand up. Raise your hands, stay in line with the shoulders, give a big reach, back to standing. Now, if that was easy for you, we can incorporate the full downward facing dog and maybe also the full chaturanga and upward facing dog. So here we go. Inhale, raise your hands, press the palms into each other. Exhale, fold forward with straight legs, go down. Inhale, lift your head up. And exhale, step right back to plank and chaturanga. Don't worry about what the hair is doing. Inhale, upward facing. Get a big breath in and lift your chest up. And now pull and roll over your toes to come directly into your downward facing dog. And then we stay here for five breaths. Get that shoulders rolling open. We stay five. One, two, three, and you want to find your peace in the downward facing dog, four, let's go for one more breath, five, switch your gaze forward and keep the hands flat, and inhale as you walk your feet between the hands, lift your chest, try not to come too much up, exhale, fold forward, go down, inhale, stand up, raise your hands, deep breath in, and back to standing, which is called samasthitihi. I'm going to show you to do one more. If you want to add in a jump forward and a jump back, and this is where we can add that in. And then you'll have your three variations of the sun salutations. Inhale, raise your hands, deep breath in. Exhale, pivot forward, come on down. Inhale, long deep breath in. Now, flatten your hands, bend your knees, and jump back. Get a good plank, and exhale, lower down. Roll over the toes, come forward to upward facing. Roll over the toes, push it on back, and down. Facing five breaths. One. Deep, steady breathing. Two. So, if you're in the posture that you hold, try to find that place of peace within yourself. Three. Almost there. Four. How you doing? Five. Now we're going to jump forward. So press into your shoulders, bring your feet together, and you want to feel the weight in the shoulders. Now you're going to bend the knees. Inhale, little hop forward, straighten the legs. Chest forward, exhale, fold. Come on down. Inhale, stand up again. Raise your hands, reach high. Samasthitihi, back to standing. Good. 
Now, let's just do one more. Inhale, raise your hands. Long, deep breath in. Exhale, fold forward, go down. Inhale, lift your chest up. And exhale, you can step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, get a big breath in. Exhale, downward facing, big breath out. Five breaths. One. Listen to the sound of the breath. So in Ashtanga Yoga, we do deep breathing with sound. Two. Three. I'm gonna do two more breaths. Four. Let's do one more breath. Five, okay, good. Switch your gaze forward. Press up into the shoulders and inhale, a little hop forward. Lift your chest, exhale, let's fold it forward. Stand up on the inhale, draw your navel in, reach up and samasthiti, which is back to standing. Do one last one in Ashtanga Yoga, we traditionally do five, Surya Namaskar A. In this one, I'm gonna count you through the traditional Sanskrit counts, which delineate each movement of the Surya Namaskar, the sun salutation. A, come, inhale, raise your hands, deep breath in. Nwe, exhale, fold, go down. Trini, inhale, deep breath. Chatwari, exhale, chaturanga. Pancha, inhale, upward facing. Shut, tail, downward facing. And now again, five breaths. One, check your alignment and choose your version of the downward dog. Two, deep steady breathing. Three, almost there. Four, Five, switch your gaze forward and sapta, inhale, little jump forward. Ashto, exhale, fold, go down. Nava, inhale, all the way up, long deep breath in, samasthiti, back to standing. Close your eyes for a moment, tune into your breath, tune into your body. Tune into the quality of your mind and your emotions and notice that it'll change from even just five Surya Namaste. And now you have begun to step onto the path of Ashtanga Yoga. Slowly open the eyes, shake it on out, congratulate yourself for day one of the Ashtanga Challenge, and check in and see how you're doing. All right? So this was day one. I hope you enjoyed the day one. As I mentioned, we're going to continue the journey on each day. Tomorrow there's the next posture and as you move in through the Ashtanga Yoga method over these 30 days with me, I hope that you'll find a little bit more peace, a little bit more happiness and really learn that the yoga practice is not a physical competition, that you want to find your appropriate level of practice and really let that be your emphasis. It's so easy for us to get very competitive as human beings to try to compete with ourselves or compete with others. But I just really want to encourage you during these 30 days to understand that you're, especially if you're newer to the practice, that you're not going to have mastered the Ashtanga Yoga method after 30 days, and nor should you expect that. I, as I mentioned before, I've been practicing for more than 20 years, and I don't feel like I've mastered this method. I still feel like I have a lot to learn. And in this way, I hope to shine a little light on the student's journey and that you keep a little inspiration to keep practicing and keep practicing, keep practicing. All right, everyone. Well, I'll send you a lot of love and tune in tomorrow so that we can continue day two of the Ashtanga challenge. If you feel like you enjoyed this day, of course, you can take another five sun salutations. Those of you who are practicing Ashtanga yoga, wonderful, you can practice. And if you are, you want to jump into the full practice, you can join me on my online channel, which is OMSARS, uh, which is O-M-S-T-A-R-S dot com. And then you can jump right into the full complete practice. But otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow for the continuation of day two of this Ashtanga challenge. All right, everyone. Lots of love, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.